Welcome back to the Sunshine Teachers Training YouTube channel and I'm so glad you're here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through a very fun material called the Large Pictures of Animals. I recently presented this lesson during a workshop and I thought, why not share it with all of you? It's such a beautiful material to use with young children and very easy to make. It sparks conversation, builds vocabulary, and it really helps them to connect with the natural world in a meaningful way. You'll be seeing three different ways that we can present this material for children of different ages, depending on where the child is in their development. And I'll be popping in before each clip just to give you a little context. So let's get started. Now, what exactly is this material? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Large, clear pictures of animals in their natural habitat. We also use matching word cards later on, depending on the child's level. Now, even though it's visually simple, there's so much depth in how we use it. With just these pictures, we help children expand their vocabulary, observe details, classify animals, and express their thoughts clearly. And they absolutely love it because children naturally gravitate toward animals. It's also one of those materials that you can keep revisiting again and again, each time in a slightly different way as the child grows. In the first presentation, we usually work with a small group of children during circle time or a quiet part of the morning. It's a very relaxed and conversational presentation. We show them one animal at a time and together we talk about what we see. What color is the animal? How many limbs does it have? What's covering its body, fur, feathers, scales? Where might it live? It's not about right or wrong answers. It's about noticing, describing, and wondering aloud together. So let's take a look, okay? All right, children, today we're going to be looking at some pictures of animals. Who can tell me what this is? Alec, what colors do you see on this bird? Yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow green, and green, blue. blue. Right, right. Do you know that there are more than 300 different kinds of parrots in the world? Wow. And where do they live? Do you know? Asia. They live in Asia, Asia. they live in Africa and South America. They live in warm countries, yeah. okay? Yeah. And what do they have on their mouth? Beak. A beak. Now their beak is a little different from other birds. Lots of birds have pointed beaks. This is rounded, okay? And they have very strong legs, all right? And they're mostly very brightly colored, okay? Now they are believed to be the smartest of all the birds. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. And some of them even talk. Have you ever seen talking parrots? Yes. yes. Yeah, they do have talking parrots. They imitate human voices. What do they eat? Uh, um, fruits. Fruit, seeds. Some birds eat small insects as well. Okay. And they can live for about 80 years. 80 wow. years? Yeah, 80 years. Okay. Here is another animal. <coughs> This is, do you know? Elephant. And what color is the elephant? Gray. And where does uh, this elephant live? South Africa. In the savannah, right, in Africa. This is an African elephant. And what, do you know what these are called on the side? Tusks. Tusks. What do they use the tusks for, do you know? To defend ourselves. Uh, for defense, what else? They also use it to dig okay to carry also what about this what is this called trunk. the trunk and what is the trunk used for it's to, to put food food in their food. mouth right to carry things okay um did we talk about what do they eat no what yeah. do they eat fruits. they eat fruits they eat grass and nuts right right okay and how about this animal what color is this animal? Brown. Brown. Brown, right? Okay. And where does it live? In the desert. In the desert, that's right. What is this on the back? Oh, oh, oh. We call it a hump. Do you know what's inside it? Water. 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 Yeah, it's water. Water. It's fat. Yeah. That's right, it's fat. It's a lot of people think it's water. It's actually fat. 
and this fat gives them energy so that they can walk for long distances on the desert and not feel hungry or thirsty. Okay, what do these animals eat? Uh, cactus. Mm, they eat cactus and because of that they have very thick lips so that the cactus doesn't hurt them. Mm -hmm. Alright. And um, they have very long eyelashes. Why do you think so? Uh, or sand. Sand. To protect them from the sand blowing in their mm -hmm. eyes. And also um, they, uh, they have a special kind, the way their legs, you know the way they walk, it's called their gait helps them to walk so they don't sink inside the sand, okay? Mm -hmm. Something very interesting about this animal, it can close its nostrils by itself. Can you close your nose without touching it? No. no. So they have nostrils that can seal again so that the sand doesn't go inside, okay? Wow. Yeah. Okay, let's see if you know what this is. Dolphin. Dolphin. Right. Has anybody seen a dolphin before? Yes. yes. Okay. What color is it? Green. And where do they live? In the ocean. In the ocean. Let's recap the yeah. pictures we looked at. Parrot. Parrot. Elephant. Camel. Dolphins. Dolphins. That's right. Flamingos. Crocodiles. That's right. So today you've worked with the plant with the the uh, large pictures of animals. I'm going to put it back on the shelf. If any time you want to take it and use it, you know that's right. Would you like to help me to tidy this up? This is very interactive. You are checking on the children, harvesting what knowledge they have, and wherever you find gaps in their information, you will fill in those gaps. Okay? Um, the material is like this it's an A4 size card. Okay? We have a border of white around it and a black outline around the picture. They can be portrait, they can be landscape, doesn't matter, okay? On the back, you will write some important information about the animal, things that you feel relate to the children, things that they will be interested to learn. The pictures, when you're making it, they should depict the animal in its natural habitat. You can't show me a kangaroo crossing a road when you're making this material because that's not its natural habitat where you would naturally see this animal. They should be clear. Now, here's the second way that we can present this material. In this version, we're working one-on-one -on -one with the child using the three-period lesson, something that we use a lot in Montessori to help children really internalize new vocabulary. The idea is to go step by step. First, we name the animal. Then we help the child to recognize it. And finally, we check if they can recall the name on their own. If the three period lesson is new to you, or if you just like to have a refresher, we've got a separate video that breaks it down clearly step by step. I'm going to link it right here. And then you can also find it in the de description box below. So let's take a look at how it works in action with the animal pictures. Baby, today I want to teach you the names of some animals. This is crocodile. Can you say crocodile? Crocodile. This is flamingo. Can you say flamingo? Flamingo. This is dolphin. Can you say dolphin? Dolphin. Can you show me the dolphin? Can you show me the crocodile? Can you show me the flamingo? Can you give me the crocodile? Can you give me the dolphin? Can you give me the flamingo? Baby, can you tell me what this is? That's a flamingo. Can you tell me what this is? Dolphin. And can you tell me what this is? Crocodile. Right, so today we have learned the names of three animals. We've learned Flamingo, Dad, Dolphin. On another day, I'll teach you some. Would you like to have more time? Yeah. Now, when we do this, uh, we do not discuss, oh, Reve, do you know what color this is? Do you know where this lives? No. When it's a three period lesson, we go straight to the vocabulary and only the vocabulary. 
Okay. Now, finally, here's a more advanced version of this material for children who are already starting to read. This time, we're going to invite the child to not only name and describe each animal, but they're also going to read and match printed word cards to the pictures. It's a lovely moment when language, reading and zoology all come together naturally. The child feels empowered. I can read and I know this animal. Let's have a look. So today we're going to look at the large pictures of animals and we are going to match them to the word text. Okay? See if you remember these animals. We've talked about them before. Do you remember what this is? It's a flamingo. Right. And what can you tell me about the flamingo? It's pink. Mm -hmm. It loves water. Mm -hmm. They're a good flyer. Mm -hmm. And they eat shrimps. Okay. Can you place it at the top? Do you remember this animal? It's there are crocodiles. Okay, what can you tell me about the crocodile? It has thick skin, mm -hmm. sharp jaw, a uh, strong jaw and sharp teeth, and they live near the water. Okay. What do they eat? They eat meat. Okay. Can I put you at the top? I have some word tags here that I would like to give you, and we're going to read and match them to the correct animal. Can you read this? Parrot. Can you match it? Parrot. Elephant. Would you like to match it? Camel. We can see the camel. Mm -hmm. Dolphin. Mm -hmm. Flamingo. Okay. Crocodile. Okay. Now we're going to go over our work. We'll read again to see if we've done it correctly. Flamingo, crocodile, dolphin, parrot, elephant, camel. Okay, so today we've worked with the large pictures of animals and the word tags. You know where it's kept on the shelf. Anytime you want to do this activity again, you can take it. Would you like to help me to tidy? Um, so at this point, I'm not telling the child this is, you know, what do you, do you know what this is? Crocodile, okay, the crocodile is this and this is. Now, at this point, she's used this material before, we've done this in other ways. Now I want to see how much does she really remember of what we've discussed. And again, then we can fill in the gaps. We've got to do a lot of variations and extensions in, uh, in, um, in culture. So giving them books to read, showing them little YouTube clips, you know, of the natural, in its, of the animal in its natural habitat, uh, having art and craft activities that are related to what you're learning about. If you have opportunities to do field trips to see, you know, petting uh, farms and things. So, as you can see, the same set of materials can offer very different experiences depending on how and when we present them. What I love most is that this activity grows with the child. At first, it's just about naming the animals and noticing features. Later, it becomes about reading, classifying, and even comparing habitats or diets. It's a perfect example of what Montessori is all about, meeting the child where they are and offering just the right amount of challenge and support. And the best part, this is one of those materials that's so easy to make yourself. If you're a parent or a homeschooler, you can create this in an afternoon. Just find good, clear photos of real animals, try to choose one where the animal is in its natural habitat and print them out on A4 paper or cardstock. If you can laminate them, they will last longer. And for the word tags, you can simply type the names in lowercase print, cut them into strips and you're done. And you know what? You don't even have to stick to pictures. You can even use animal models too, especially for younger children or children who benefit from more hands-on experiences. In fact, we have another video where we use models of fruit in the exact same presentation. And I'm also going to share the link to that video right above and in the description box. And if your child shows a lot of interest, don't stop there. There are so many lovely ways to extend this. You can invite your child to collect animal pictures from magazines or newspapers and to make their own animal scrapbook. You could add coloring sheets or read picture books about the animals that they're learning about. 
Some children might even want to make a mini poster about one particular animal, where it lives, what it eats, and so on. All of these ideas help children to deepen their understanding and build that sense of wonder and connection with the animal world. If this kind of hands-on, child-centered learning speaks to you and you'd like to explore more, you are warmly invited to check out our courses. We offer both diploma and non-diploma options, long courses, short courses, there's something for everyone depending on what you're looking for. Everything is online so you can learn from the comfort of your home wherever you are in the world. And the best part, it's completely flexible. You set the pace and we're here to support you every step of the way. Whether you're a teacher, a parent, or just someone who loves learning, you'll find a course that works for you. That I guarantee you. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video gave you some ideas and inspiration to try this material with your children. Until we meet again, have a beautiful day.